Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Sunday, September 20th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about a fight that I got wrong. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's talk heavyweights. Effie Ogjaba versus Jonathan Rice, who called himself Johnny Rice for this fight, right? This fight's a must watch if you're into just observing heavyweights and figuring out what makes certain fighters great. This fight will show you what separates a Tyson Fury, who can get up on his toes, who can dance, who can move, and who can hurt you while he's moving, who has an offensive game going forward, who has an offensive game going backward, who moves well enough where you can't hide in the ring against him. This fight will show you why he's so much better than even young, promising, world-class level talent. Right? Ajaba is highly regarded. He's a former Olympian from Nigeria. He used to be with Premier Boxing Champions. He's now with Prince Boxing. His trainer is Shakur Stevenson's trainer. Think about that. Right? He used to be trained by Ronnie Shields. In other words, this guy is getting attention from the sport, both from a managerial and promotional standpoint. I believe he's with top rank, as well as from a training standpoint. He has a spectacular straight right hand. If it lands on anyone, including Tyson Fury, that person could be knocked out. He has a very high KO percentage. But let's just say compared to the Tyson Furies of the world, compared to the Usyk's of the world, this guy has problems, right? This fight is puzzling. Before the fight, I thought, okay, the favorite, Ajaba by KO, hedged with Johnny Rice, the underdog, simply to win, right? I lost it all on this fight. Ajaba wins by decision. But my goodness, was it curious. Folks, Ajaba... Who's 26? In other words, by this stage of his career, which is later than when Floyd Patterson won the title, Mike Tyson won the title, Ali won the title, right? This guy's into his 20s. I would expect him to be a little bit more together than he showed in this fight. But I'm going to be a little bit hard in this video because... I believe a lot of these fighters are in bubbles. The people around the fighter don't want to discourage the fighter. Don't want to look ungrateful for having the opportunity to serve as promoter, manager, advisor, right? That's a new term in boxing. <laughs> um, so they will soft pedal it, right? But understand, a job as performance was disappointing. I have the fight in my favorites folder. He's way too robotic. Right? He's too predictable. He's too robotic. A Tyson Fury, you don't know which way he's going to dart. This guy, he's not even up on his toes. He's just looking to land that straight right hand. He has a decent jab. But again, this guy just doesn't know how to put it together at 26. So, he has a problem hitting a moving target. Just what we said in the pre-fight video. He has a problem reading movement, which is beyond what I said in the pre-fight video. 
here he has an opponent who's not even throwing punches back. Folks, it's a 10-round fight. Johnny Rice is in his 30s. He's not fighting Tyson Fury. He's not fighting Anthony Joshua. He's not fighting Usyk. He's not fighting Wilder. This is his opportunity to show us that he belongs in the heavyweight mix. Right? He has a robotic young guy in front of him who's predictable, who's not a fast mover. And, of course in this fight, which could have made a career, Johnny Rice decides to throw less than 270 punches in a 10-round fight. What's the deal? Folks, for those doing the math, that's less than 30 punches per round. Hey, player, if you're the underdog, you got to do more than that to have a chance to win the fight. Keep in mind, too, Johnny Rice is the one moving. He's not even trying to hunt down the opponent. He's not throwing punches. So one would think that Effie Ajaba would be on his front foot hunting him. Right? The opponent's not even throwing punches back. Not only that, Johnny Rice is really like a Jabba, one-handed, right? You know, if you're going to get knocked down by Rice, it's likely to be off of his own right hand. So it seems to me an advanced fighter would have realized a few rounds in, you know what, my opponent's not even throwing punches back. Why don't I get on my front foot, block his right hand, rough him up? At 26, that's not a Jabba's game. Johnny Rice is moving around the ring, and let's be clear here. Johnny Rice is not exactly Ali moving around the ring. He's not Tyson Fury moving around the ring. Johnny Rice is moving around the ring. It shuts a Jabba down. He can't even throw punches. He's clueless on how to stop the movement. He can't cut off the ring. He can't even run in there like Golovkin did against Cal Brook, for example. Right? Run in there to try to bully the guy, to do football moves on the guy. By the way, Johnny Rice is a former football player. Right? A Jabba who played soccer. Just didn't know how to decide, okay, let me, let me pin this guy. Let me make it clear to everyone in the arena. And because it's COVID-19, that was just the ref and a few virtual fans, right? But let me make it clear to everyone watching TV that this guy is running. Ajaba is just too young and too unaware to do that. So he couldn't even run after Johnny Rice. He couldn't even force Rice to sink or swim, decide, okay, am I going to continue running here or am I going to hold him? He couldn't even force Johnny Rice to hold on for dear life. Right? No, he was in his construct and his construct doesn't travel well. So he's moving slowly, right? Everything has to key off the jab. As I said in the pre-fight video, I believe he has a tell. I don't think a Jabba can throw that straight right hand unless he touches you first with the jab, right? The jab sets the timing for everything. So I believe Johnny Rice knows when that right hand is coming. He gets caught with one early, but then is able to make the adjustment. I believe Johnny Rice knows when that right hand is coming. I believe Johnny Rice understands that if he uses lateral movement to force a Jabba to lift his feet, 
then Abjaba is not going to throw a lot of punches. Is not going to be able to find him. Is never going to break his rhythm. Is always going to be moving at a glacial pace. Even when Johnny Rice is not throwing punches. Let me say this too. How could you have a decent jab, which Abjaba has, and a great straight right hand, which Abjaba have, has, and not be able to keep Rice in the pocket. It's because Ajaba doesn't have the confidence to throw a good left hook. He can't put the punches together. If he hits you with a straight right hand, you're going down. The problem is he can't find you if you're a mover to hit you with that straight right hand. And if you're paying attention, you know he's not going to lead with that straight right hand. You know he's going to try to touch you with the jab first. So, of course, if you're able to dodge the jab, if you're outside and you're leaning back, and you're fainting like you're going to come in the pocket, then he throws the jab and you move away from the jab, I don't believe that Jabba has the confidence to then throw the right hand. So, let's just say this highly touted, unbeaten fighter in his mid-twenties has work to do. If he's planning on hopping in the ring against the very best, right? If his volume was greatly reduced by Johnny Rice, what happens if he's in the ring with Tyson Fury? who's even taller than Johnny Rice, who moves better than Johnny Rice, and who has the tools to dispense heavy punches from distance. Isn't that what Tyson Fury did in the Wilder rematch? You think Tyson Fury is going to go 10 rounds against you and throw less than 270 punches? Keep in mind, too, with big opponents, and that's what rules the roost right now at heavyweight. Right, Joshua, Wilder, Fury, you're talking about 6-5 and up. With big heavyweights, a guy who's hesitant to throw that right hand, unless it's a clear day, is going to have a very hard time, just in terms of reach, getting close enough to these big men to throw it. Right? So, just know, Ajaba has work to do. He's in the right division. Right? The heavyweight division is big money. Fighters age more slowly at heavyweight than they do in the other divisions. But right now, he's too robotic. His volume drops far too much if the fighter he's fighting is a mover. Right? He's too predictable. He's not going to lead with some great lead left hook or with the straight right hand. Rather, he needs to touch you with the jab. You prevent him from doing so you get the kind of boring fight that we just got. Over 10 rounds, where Ajaba never tries, even though the fight's televised, never tries to just bum-rush the pocket to get the KO against a one-handed opponent who's not even throwing punches back. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Put another way, a Jabba is going to have a problem against movers like a Michael Hunter, right? Like an Alexander Povetkin. In other words, if you look at a highlight reel of a Jabba, you see the punching power, right? If you look more closely, 
you notice it's all straight right hands. Right? He has one punch KO capability. Unfortunately, that's a blessing and a curse. Right? The curse part is that he doesn't know how to set up the KO. He's not a guy who's going to come in and throw a combination and then boom! There's the straight right hand. No, he's moving relatively slowly. Right? He's trying to come in behind a jab. He's trying to time it so he can lean into a right hand. That doesn't work against movers. People who can get up on their toes, who understand the value of movement, realize that if they can get this guy to turn, just lift his feet, the chances of him throwing that right hand, much less landing it, greatly decrease. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Ajaba has work to do. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.